Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In today's video, we will be discussing single phase full wave rectifier and primarily we will be discussing example 3.3 from third edition of Power Electronics book by Mr. Rashid. So the basic concept of um, center tapped will be clear from this diagram. And see, this is the input signal. Center tape, we have a resistance connected here. And these two behave like an independent uh, portions. So if the input is going positive, then both these will be positive. Now remember, in some books, it is said that there will be opposite polarity. So, so when this is going positive, this will go negative. But here we will we'll follow this principle that both will be positive. And so when both will be positive, then the output will also be positive. Because of positive, this will behave like a uh, open circuit. And the upper one will behave like a short circuit. And similarly for negative half cycle, the bottom one will become forward bias and behave like a short circuit and upper open circuit. So this concept we'll be using. One more thing that in any rectifier that we use, uh, we although we desire that there should be a DC output, but practically it is not. The output voltage should ideally be pure DC, but the output of a practical rectifier contains harmonics or ripples along with the DC. So you can see this is the DC line, but this has harmonics or ripples we can see, and there are many of the harmonics uh, if you use Fourier analysis to find. But we can from here conclude that the output voltage is actually consists of two parts or two components. One we can call V out DC and other we can call V out RMS. Okay, now this is the circuit given in the book. This is input signal. And for full wave rectifier, we have two positive peaks. And I feel more comfortable if we draw it like this. So if we take out the resistor here, connect it to ground, connect it to ground, the same circuit, the output will be now two peaks. But as we mentioned that the output have two components, the DC component and the RMS component or AC component, we can say. And similarly, there will be two powers, the PDC and PAC at the output. Also, these uh, uh, voltages here in the uh, top half and bottom half, both will be called Vs, the secondary voltage, and each will have the same peak, Vm maximum. The one or two things that we have done in the, in case of a half wave rectifier, will follow the same. That if we divide this, if draw this red line after the diode, then the circuit is basically divided into two parts. Up to here, we have the AC signal, this one. But after the diode, we have what we call DC or pulsating DC signal. So the, the secondary voltage Vs, which is actually Vs RMS, will be called V maximum over under root 2. We know that the that is the formula for RMS. But in the second half, the VODC will be two times Vm divided by pi, and VO RMS will be Vm divided by under root 2, that is 0 0.707 Vm. Now just to give an idea, in case of a half wave rectifier we got VODC 0 0.318 instead of 63, so it's just half of it. But VO RMS was VM over 2, that is 0 0.5 and not 0 0.7. So that's the difference you have to keep in mind. Okay, now the, if we have to find the performance parameter, 
full lab rectifier with a center tape transformer. And these are seven parameters that we will be discussing, we'll be solving, and we'll consider one by one. Again, I'll recommend if you have not seen uh, the half wave rectifier video, I'll give the link. You must see that first. So uh, many concepts will be clear, which we are taking here as for granted. So the first one, efficiency. The efficiency, or basically, the correct name should be rectification ratio, because efficiency when we talk in case of a electrical circuit, then it is input and output, uh, uh, especially in case of a motor, power input and power output will give you the efficiency. But here it is not, although we are using power DC and power AC, but this is actually, it gives the figure of merit and permits us to compare the effectiveness of the two signals. So PDC is VDC, IDC, and we have seen in the previous slide that VDC is this voltage, IDC will be the same voltage divided by resistance, so this will be PDC. And similarly, PAC is VRMS, IRMS, this was VRMS, and IRMS will be the same voltage divided by the resistance of this formula for PAC. And now we'll just take the ratio of the two. And you know, Vm square over R here, Vm square over R here, they'll cancel. So this will be the term remaining. And final answer will be 0 0.81, and which is equal to 81%. Okay, the next uh, item is the FF or form factor. Now, what is form factor? Form factor is a major of the shape of the output voltage. So this gives you an idea about the shape. And again, in, uh, in a, a previous video, half wave rectifier, I have explained this in details. So this is the formula. It is V RMS over V DC. So here it was power, but here it is voltage. And RMS on the top divided by DC. And RMS, we know, 0. 707 Vm and this is 0 0.636 Vm. So the ratio will be 1.11. Part C is the RF or the ripple factor. The ripple factor is defined as the ratio of the RMS value of an AC component in the rectifier to the average value of the DC of the rectified output. Now, what does this mean? Actually, you can see from here that it is VAC RMS over VDC. Now, VAC RMS can be written as under root V RMS square minus VDC square. And if we divide both sides by VDC, then this becomes our RF or ripple factor according to the definition. And inside the under root, We'll get this term, and if you recall, V RMS over V DC is the form factor. So we'll use this formula actually to find the ripple factor. The form factor formula, form factor in the previous slide, we found to be 1.1 square minus 1, so it will be 0 0.482 or 48.2 percent. Next is the TUF transformer utilization factor. Now, this is slightly tricky and controversial as well. The formula remains same, PDC divided by VSIS, or the power of the transformer or voltage ampere of the transformer. Now, let's see what is the definition say. The DC output power from a rectifier, PDC, divided by AC power, the transformer secondary could deliver to a resistive load. So we have to keep in mind that the transformer secondary we are talking here, and the power delivered by the transformer secondary is voltage times current VSIS. 
and PDC we have known this formula v square over r now this is uh, what uh, the uh, handbook uh, refers to and also it is followed by the third edition of the book in the case of a full wave rectifier with center tab transformer the circuit can be treated as two half wave rectifiers operating together so he is calling that this is one half wave and this is another half wave and then he has concluded that therefore the transformer secondary voltage VA, the whole VA rating that is VSIS is double that of a half wave rectifier, so two times. But we'll discuss uh, um, subsequently that this may not be the correct conclusion. Okay. So what he's saying is that the VA is two times VSIS. Now VSIS is for uh, one half, half wave rectifier. And we know the formula, this was the VS and IS in case of a half wave rectifier. This diagram, if you recall, is IS of the current that is flowing through the half wave rectifier is V RMS here which is 0 0.5 divided by R. So IS is 0 0.5 VMR. And using this formula, then we just plug in the values to then 0 0.7 VM. Now this, this VS is we are here, VRMS 0 0.7. And I we connect, got from here, I is 0 0.5 VM over R. And solving, uh, we get the answer to be 57.32%, the transformer utilization factor. Now, couple of things, uh, just for your knowledge. This is what the third edition of the book says. But in the fourth edition, probably he realized the mistake and he's saying that the VA is under root 2 VSIS, not 2 VSIS, under root 2 VSIS. And although there's no explanation given, but I guess that adding the two RMS terms, we cannot add them directly. We have to take their square, add them then under root. And if we do that process, then we'll get an under root 2 VSIS. But when we, uh, if you want to dig more, then you have to go to the fourth edition of the book. So with this, the TUF now will be 81.06% instead of 57. Now, there are so many uh, explanations and so many different views. One book says that you have to use the TUF for the full rectifier with center tape transformer is given by the primary TUF and secondary TUF and average of the two. And this he got it to be 81, 0 0.811. And this from here is 0 0.574 dividing the two. So the total TUF of the transformer will be 69.25. So these were various uh, options, but we'll, since we are uh, dealing this question from the third edition, so we'll follow this value of TUF. The next is PIV, peak inverse voltage of the diode. Again, we come back to this. And if you see from here, when, as we discussed, when there is a positive voltage, the upper diode will become short circuit, and the current will flow through the resistance and here it will be positive negative. At the bottom, however, the same voltage, this one is also present here. And if we take now the lower loop, then we have a VM here, and we have also this voltage is equal to VM. Therefore, the voltage appearing across the open circuit diode will be two times, that is, it will be negative two VM. So this much force is being applied against the 
diode which is open circuit. So this is called the peak inverse voltage. So this is how you can conclude that it has to be 2 Vm or minus 2 Vm. So the peak reverse blocking voltage PIV is equal to 2 Vm. Okay, and then we come to the uh, next term which is called the crest factor. And the crest factor is a measure of the peak input current, IS peak, as compared to its RMS value. That means CF will be IS peak divided by IS RMS. And IS peak we know is V peak over RM, uh, V peak over R, V peak or VM, same thing. And IRMS is the RMS value divided by R, RMS voltage divided by R. This is IS peak and this is uh, IS RMS. And solving, we get the answer to be under root 2. The next is the input power factor of PF. Now, again, uh, referring to half cycle, I have uh, used this diagram, which is called the power triangle diagram. And from here, you can see that the power factor is real power divided by the apparent power. In our case, we'll take the AC real power, PAC, and VA as the uh, um, apparent power. Both we have calculated. PAC, we have already done this. And VA, we just saw that it will be, of the two sides, it will be two times VSIS. And so this will be VA. And putting, uh, we get the power factor 0 0.707. Now, if you are solving the fourth addition question, then obviously you have to put under root 2 here and calculate the value and use that value here. I hope you have been able to follow this. Thank you.